There's been a lot of talk about pronouns this week, first with the ACLU valiantly defending the Loudoun County school system's right to force teachers to use the preferred pronouns of students, and then with the State Department urging us all to join in celebrating International Pronouns Day. As I said yesterday, it seems that it's, it's finally becoming apparent to most people on the right that this pronoun issue is not the sideshow that um, many once thought it was. I mean, it is, for one thing, an attack on our fundamental human liberties. The worst kind of attack, in fact. The problem with the pronoun policy in Loudoun County and with similar policies that are being adopted and will soon be adopted in other localities around the country, it's not simply that speech is being compelled, but specifically that false speech is being compelled. I mean, you can only have freedom, real freedom in truth, which is why any attack on real freedom is also an attack on truth. And these are the implications. And I think, I hope, that that's now obvious to most people on the right. But I also hope that anyone who was slow uh, on the uptake, you know, those who took a while to understand the real threat that all of this seemingly bizarre and fringe stuff poses to our society, I hope they won't make the same mistake with the clips that I'm going to play for you now. Because here we have uh, two more contributions to society from TikTok. Both videos feature young people, teenagers, taking the preferred pronoun concept to seemingly new extremes. In this first one, we find out that uh, some of these kids are actually identifying as inanimate objects. Listen. Hello, I am Doll. I am one of our object alters. When I front, I find it very difficult to remember things that the body requires, such as how to move, how to blink, how to breathe, and how to speak. For the purpose of filming this video, I have Meredith co-conscious with me, so that I will not mess up. However, this is the third take, the first two, I forgot to breathe and or speak. I hope this helps you learn. Now, Doll here has not invented the doll pronoun concept. In fact, a handy resource is the website pronoune.xyz, which lists and explains all of the different alternative pronouns currently in existence. And there are a lot of them. Pages and pages, hundreds and hundreds. From the very first page, you can see that um, if you go there, it's apparently popular now to identify as an emoji. Many of the pronouns aren't words at all, but pictures. Other pronouns include um, poison, poisons, poisons, and poison self. I assume those are big pharma's pronouns. Please respect them. Also, fay, fairy, fair, fairies, fairy self, kitty, kitties, kitty self, stars, star, star self, and slow sloths, sloth self, and on and on. There's also dem, demon, demons, demon self. And if you're wondering what a self-identifying demon looks like, well, you're in luck. Hi, my name's Jasper. I use they at pronouns. Hi, my name is Liana. I use they demon pronouns. This video is how to use our pronouns. So we're going to basically present three sentences. Um, one of them is going to have one pronoun, the other one's going to have the other pronoun, and then the last one is going to have both pronouns interchanged. So Liana uses they, them pronouns and demon pronouns. So the first sentence would be, Liana is my partner, they are cute, and I am theirs. I love them very much, and I hope they love themselves too. For the demon pronouns, it would be, Liana is my partner, Deem is cute, and I belong to Deem. I love Demon very much, and I hope Deem loves Demon's self too. And then interchanging the two would be, Liana is my partner, they are cute, and I am Deem's. I love Demon very much, and I hope they love Demon's self too. She's she, that she's going to be a linguistics professor. Well, that's that's this is what what this is what um, grammar. Teaching language and grammar, that's what, that's what it's going to be pretty soon. And there is something very on the nose about this. In fact, in the Gospels, when Jesus encountered demon-possessed people, they would sometimes go by they, them pronouns because there was more than one demon infesting the person. And so we may be able to draw some connections and analogies here. But I'm afraid that a lot of people on the sane side of the ideological spectrum might see this sort of thing and make the same mistake they made with gender ideology more broadly, assuming that it's kind of a, 
this weird and wacky phase and it's not anything widespread or serious or worth our attention. Why, why are we even paying attention? This is just TikTok. Who cares? And in saner times, you know, in a culture that hadn't already sunk below the surface and into the icy depths of full-on insanity, that would probably be the right reaction. After all, Demon Self over there is really just a goth kid trying to be edgy, right? We had those when I was a teenager. The only difference is that now TikTok exists, so they have this unfortunate vehicle to publicize and advertise these embarrassing phases. Except that's not the only difference. The other difference, and it's a big one, is that we now live in a society that validates, legitimizes, and encourages these alternative identities. Now, when I was a kid, the adults would tell the goth kids that they were going through a phase, they need to snap out of it, or they're never going to be able to get a job or a girlfriend. Right? That's what the adults used to say to kids going through these kinds of phases. Now the adults stand off on the sideline in cheerleader uniforms and pom-poms, sometimes literally cheering the kids on in their delusions. What would otherwise be a phase, what would be something that makes them look back in a few years and cringe, now becomes an identity. The meaningless is transformed into the meaningful. The effect is that a generation of kids, soon to be multiple generations, have been plunged into mass psychosis. We are not merely validating mental illness, but creating it. What would be a phase instead becomes the kernel of a debilitating, lifelong identity crisis. And our culture is there with the water cans, making sure that those seeds are germinated. There's not going to be any awakening moment for these kids, or at least there need not be. I hope there is, but there's nothing that would cause that to happen. Because we used to say, well, wait until you get into the real world. And uh, that'll be a wake-up call, because the real world doesn't work like this. But there is no real world anymore, not according to the people who run our society. There is no reality. Everything's subjective. Everything is malleable. Nothing is solid. There's no firm ground to stand on. Mass psychosis. A generation driven into madness before they're old enough to drive a car. That's what we're facing nothing less. And I think we need to start treating this like the major problem that it clearly is. Hey, listen, hit the subscribe button. Do it right now. I demand it. And I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.